Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, formerly the Libertarian Counterpoint podcast. <clears throat> We're coming at you on December 18th of 2020. Uh, still kind of a lot of crazy stuff going on. Uh, year's not over yet, so we'll see what happens. But before we get there, uh, let me introduce our panel to you. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in liberty, retired engineer in the state of California. And up in our right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, a Peace, pilot baby. in the state of Peace. California. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. And so let's just jump right into the topics. So, uh, of course, you know, all kinds of craziness this year because of uh, the domino effects of all these lockdowns and the government's attempts to solve the problems it created in the lockdowns. <laughs> and some of this has to do with unemployment and all of the changes that have happened uh, to uh, them trying to send out checks to people. And we talked a little bit in the past about a problem that the uh, government of California was having where about a billion dollars was lost a lot to criminals in jail who were actually applying for unemployment and getting it. <laughs> so this might be one of those things that pushes, uh, you know, possibly our Governor Newsom over the edge on uh, on a uh, uh, potential recall. But uh uh, the, this is also happening in some other places as well. Uh, in the state of Washington, they've been hit for uh, close to, I think, a half a billion dollars on uh, 500, 576. Yeah, 576 million dollars yes. on uh, this thing called Scattered Canary. Apparently, it's a uh, hacker group uh, that they think it might be based out of Nigeria. And they've been setting up these different plans to defraud some of these unemployment, these state unemployment agencies in different parts of the country because they're changing the standards willy nilly, just kind of like our election standards, how you know, all the rules were changed in short notice. And wow, how could who would have thought there'd be trouble? But, <laughs> uh, you know, we're seeing something very similar happen with unemployment checks. And as you start changing the standards, trying to get that money out there with you know, a lot of Keynesians, it's just get that money out there in the economy, just get it flowing. That's yeah. what we need. Well, some of the money falls into criminal hands. In fact, fairly a large amount of it is falling into criminal hands. Uh, yeah. You know, what do you guys think about some of that? Well, first of all, I'm on their email list, these guys from <laughs> Nigeria. Yeah, I, get, I get frequent emails from these guys. You know, so I, just to let you know, and, uh, you know, hey, uh, who better to take the money? At least it's going out of the country. It's going to cause inflation over in Nigeria and not here. So, uh, you know, there is a bright side to the whole thing. I mean, may, may be hard to see it. Uh, it it, it kind of reminds me, and people are going to have to go to the first uh, show of today to, to know what I mean by this. But I just remember... Uh, I am, you know, I'm seeing things here that really maybe not, aren't there, but I do remember well, Tim, just really to break in real quick. I, you know, I may need some of these glasses you guys are wearing because yeah. it's really hard for me to see. <laughs> well, I, you I guys just, have some extra Liberty vision going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, Sorry. I, I have a real good memory of a really hot date with Selma Hayek. So if you really want to know what that's all about, you have to see, you have to watch the previous show. Okay? That's all we're going to say. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really think about the public service that these guys are doing for us, you know, Tim, but that's, yeah. that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. It's really a public, <laughs> a public service. They're but saying, hey, you guys have too much to I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I'm sorry, Tim. I didn't you hear. guys are monet. You guys are monetizing way too much there in America. Send some of that stuff over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this, but this thing gets back to the, to the the efficiency of government. You know, an oxymoron in 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 every sense of the word. That in, in California, same thing happened. The prisoners figure out. They got, they got almost a billion dollars. Now we have this criminal element based in Nigeria. Now we have half a billion dollars. And God knows how, and I'm sure we're going to find out the same thing in other states sooner or later. Yeah. The government yeah. cannot manage the money that we are sending them. 
they're destroying the economy, and now they're going to ask us for more so that they could mismanage it even further. And yep. this is the madness that's going on. We're going to do, we have to do something <laughs> about this at some point in time. Otherwise, we won't have a country anymore. This is craziness. Are you saying that there's a possibility that if we know about these scams, there may be <laughs> other scams that we have yet to find out about? Is that what you're saying, Leon? Of there, course. Th why would I the, say, why would I, why would I insinuate a thing like that? Yeah. You think uh, so? <laughs> this, this could just be the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yes. And so let's, yeah, let's give them control of more of our money so that we'll have a bigger iceberg. Yeah, true. There you go. There you go. If we, if we tug too hard at this string, we might find out that Hunter Biden is getting one of these checks too. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing nowadays. I mean, there's a lot of attention on him, so I don't know if the checks are still flowing for him or not from other yeah. countries. Hunter has seemed to go on into hiding. His father is about to become president. And we, you know, and who knows? They have so much involvement with China these days. I don't even know. Maybe China is getting some of this money. Who knows? <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, yeah. This yeah. Oh, well, sorry. You know, go ahead. Oh, oh, that's okay. You go ahead, Tim. Yeah. No, I was done. I was oh, okay. I, I know. I well, can't you know, remember. You just, you, what, what I'm, just, I'm still thinking about Selma. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get us all dreaming about Selma. This is gonna be a very silent, quiet show. Yeah, I'll exactly. <laughs> just look up. And... <laughs> well, you know, Tim. Tim, I'm a little surprised that you're thinking about Selma. And I thought it would have been Tulsi, you know. But okay, I mean, it's just me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> you know, this gets us back to. Uh, Back to uh, getting our minds clear again. Yeah. <laughs> back, to, back to dry economics and <laughs> libertarian, uh, you know, worries about government taking over. Um, yeah. This is, does bring us, uh, though. It, it, this is a kind of a domino thing, you know. I mean, every time the government does something, it, it causes some distortion in the economy, and and you know, they 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 may have good intent on one thing or the other, but. The, the problem is, is one thing impacts another. And we talked a little bit in the last show about, you know, these uh, moratoriums on evictions and, you know, because, you know, and that was needed because they told everybody they couldn't go to work. So you had to have a way to get people from being thrown out of their homes. And then, of course, uh, you've got to then find a way to keep landlords from losing the property because, ah, there we go. <laughs> Tim is dragging <laughs> us back. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty soon we all just don't care and we have pictures of Selma Hayek all over our wall <laughs> we just give up we're, we're earning our uh, title of knuckleheads oh there we go there you I'm go. sorry all right what, what were you saying <laughs> well I was just gonna say that you know things like that do get do get my motor <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> before, before we leave this topic, 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 yeah. I mean, um, and before we get Dominoes. off, I'm, I'm, I'm telling my, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know okay. we, always, we always talk about the government and their good intentions. You know, there's a very common saying, it's kind of cliche these days. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Good intentions. And pictures of Selma. <laughs> oh, and pictures of Selma. <laughs> yeah. put, the, put the cuffs on. <laughs> they were all good intentions. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to get through the rest of this show, quite frankly. You know, <laughs> Selma, Selma have infected us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we're into it only nine minutes and 18 seconds. So we can maybe salvage it. <laughs> well, keep in mind, too, that that fantasy might be shattered the moment you start throwing some of your libertarian ideas out there in that date with someone. <laughs> I think the, the, uh, the facade would all come crumbling down. <laughs> Wait till after the, that date. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what Selma doesn't know won't hurt her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, oh, well, gosh. this is a perfect segue <laughs> into <laughs> we were uh, there. There was actually a sort of a feminist issue, um, a statue oh. in the UK. Oh yeah, <laughs> excuse me. That uh, <clears throat> that wound up bringing up the whole statue debate again. Uh, apparently, <clears throat> there was a statue that was supposed to honor uh, Mary uh, Wollstonecraft, who I guess was sort of an icon of the feminist movement <clears throat> and was big on on uh, getting uh, women suffrage in the early days, I believe. <clears throat> um, but the statue apparently is one that it's kind of a modern type of statue and it shows her uh, naked. <laughs> it shows the form of a naked woman there in the statue. And so there's people that are protesting and want it taken down. And, you know, this, this kind of comes right back. And I thought we were kind of past some of this uh, statue talk, but it seems like we're never going to get away from it. Uh, <laughs> so do you guys have any, uh, any thoughts on it? <laughs> well, if they can attack a moose, a statue of a moose in uh, in Portland or wherever it was, I think it was Portland <coughs> or Seattle, if they can attack a moose statue, <coughs> they can attack anybody for any reason. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, what else do they attack? Uh, some family, a woman with her two kids was like a pioneer, uh, a Portland thing, uh, the pioneer family, and they attacked that one. You know, I mean, it's, there's no end to that. So I'm certainly not surprised that a naked woman would be uh, attacked for that. Um, for, for, I mean, a statue of a naked woman, a statue of a naked woman, not a naked woman. Yeah. They'd attack a naked woman too. Far yeah. Who the hell knows? Yeah. I, I noticed, Tim, when you erected that monument to Salma Hayek earlier in the show, it came down pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, for fear of, uh, of repercussions, you know. Yes, I mean, yes. It probably would help our viewership, though, if we had some kind of uh, of, of similar um, uh, controversy, uh, and maybe Selma might do it for us. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. But, you know, this is this whole thing about this statue is, you know, is, is political correctness. On steroids, this is wokeness gone, gone, gone to the extreme. These people have lost their mind. We cannot even have a debate about these things anymore, because if you, if you even suggest anything that maybe we should think about this, you're either a racist or sexist, or you belong to the white male patriarchy that is destroying the world, and all these sort of nonsense that they always come up with. As soon as they find something that you disagree with, with them. These people on the left, they have lost their mind. And Karl Marx is still alive. You know, this Marxist theology that have infected our souls here in the United States and in all of Western civilization, it is driving us into the ground. Europe is already essentially lost. And if we're not careful, so will it be the United States. We gotta be careful about these people and their leftist ideas. They always come with some nice sweet words to tell us how great this utopia will be, but we can never get there because they're too damn crazy to institute anything that's worthwhile. The only thing I could add to that, Leon, is that it would be wokeness on a three-day methamphetamine bender. Yes. <laughs> I could I could not say that. I could not have said that any better thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, one of the funny things though, about the whole this whole statue thing, and it gets back into you know, like you're saying, Marx and socialism and all this. But you know, when you start having things that are part of the commons, that is the problem: is that everybody has different ideas about it, and so not everybody wants oh. the same thing out there. And I mean, that's that's part of the reason why we really should look to to having more things on private property instead of expanding the commons, we should be shrinking the commons and then people can put whatever they want, you know, in their own areas. I mean, you know, we have lots of statues of Jesus all over the place, but they're not in the commons. They're in churches for the most part. And, you know, for the most part, that works pretty good. People aren't, you know, running around tearing those statues down. And I, I just, it's hard to understand why everybody wants their icon to be front and center in the face of everybody else, you know, it just, and, and, you know, some people 
don't want that and they want to pull it down and it's just uh, you know they mm. for some reason i think the problem is for a lot of people who want things in the comments they don't understand that everybody else doesn't think just like them <laughs> mm. think well, well yeah but in their defense the it doesn't belong to the people that are tearing it down they have no, no. right over it no. over doing that so uh exactly. it, belo- it it does belong if, if you say it belongs to anybody it does belong to the people in common and therefore yeah. uh the people in common can decide to uh take it down or leave it up uh after negotiating that so um you know there you are i mean you know i'm not a big statue guy either it's a lot of narcissism going on and stuff and you know but <laughs> but again it, it's it's history and things things like that and it gets people um you know thinking about uh you know uh, accomplishments made by other people whether they're bad or good or a combination which is you know most of them they're probably all of them it's a combination of good and bad because human beings are both good and bad and uh you know it, it you know if we want to talk about a christian principle uh which i guess i do um you know, he who hath no sin cast the first stone or exactly pull pull the first statue down. You know, yeah. so they're they're pulling. The, who who are these people that are so pure uh, uh, and uh, ethical that they are um, able to uh, make a decision over something that's not theirs and pull it down or want it, you know, taken down forcibly? Uh, who are they? You know, are where? What makes them so pure? You know, and this and this is the kind of things when you start pulling down statues. Okay, who makes the decision on what who, that what should be pulled down or what should stay up? Okay, George Washington, the father of our nation. Okay, he was a great man. He led led a revolution that brought us life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness here in this great land. But he was a slave owner. Martin Luther King. Who was this great man who led led the civil rights movement? Brought to all Americans the 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 the, the, the all of the civil rights that we could think about. But he was a known womanizer. Where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? The point is, Jason, you're making a good point about the commons versus on private property. I am going to say, if you're going to, if we are acting through our elected representatives, that is good enough for me. Okay, if they want to put, a, if they if they vote, they raise their hand and they vote, and they put up a statue. We, we're going to remember history. We're going to remember all of history, the good and the bad and the ugly. I don't have a problem with that. But yeah. as long as we are acting through <laughs> our elected officials, if at some point in time they come along and they say, "Well, we no longer want to have the statue of of uh, of X Y Z up," okay, fine. If our elected mm-hmm. official have made the decision mm-hmm. to take that statue down, I have no problem with that. Yeah. As long as our elected officials are doing that. I don't want mm-hmm. these vandals, these political correct, these woke people to be making that kind of decisions for yeah. me. I don't want that. Yeah. When, and then that, that's really where it comes down to the narcissism is most people who seem to be into socialism seem to think that everybody else sees it the way they do, you know? And so they, and if you don't, then you're one of the bad guys and you need to, you know, be, stomped out i guess but you know so it's pull down the statue without any conversation just you know we know we're right and you are wrong we have a moral good here so we're going to pull this down and you are morally evil so we don't care about what you think and at the same time they want to also it's not even that they're principled that they don't want any statues they just want their statues exactly they want yes they want their choices they want their choices of statues out there yeah, yeah, of their of their perfect people. But uh, the only other thing I would uh, request is if the government is going to decide that the statue is no longer uh, viable and should be ta- removed, I want them to refund the original cost of the statue back to the taxpayers uh, adjusted for inflation. Yeah, there you go. Fair <laughs> yeah, and I can accept that. I think that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> getting to another uh, topic about, you know, some of this crazy stuff, you know, where the police just stood by and watched statues being torn down, you know, uh, earlier this year uh, with all the riots. Um, <clears throat> you know, we have a, a another situation in some of these areas. They still want to defund the police. 
um, which, you know, as a libertarian, and I certainly want there to be less things that the police are doing to us or looking into us on, but I do want them there to protect property rights, you know, there to protect people from aggressing upon each other. And in but in some of these places, they seem to, uh, I guess they seem to be just thinking if we defund the police, if there's no police, then there's no problem <laughs> in some places. And, and, and so in Seattle, uh, that was one place where they were looking, I think, at defunding the police. And I think they still are looking at that. And um, they, they want to replace them with social workers. Well, just recently... Um, a social worker there was murdered by one of her clients. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and apparently there were other social workers around and they didn't come to her aid. <laughs> they, they hid behind doors. <laughs> uh -huh. And so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, exactly what it is that, you know, there are these people who are imagining replacing police with social workers. Imagine exactly is going to happen here. Um, uh, anyways, but apparently in Seattle, I guess, uh, a, a, a person who was uh, a client of one of these social workers pulled out a knife and just stabbed her to death. And I guess she was a case manager for this person. And um, so anyways, I, it's just, you know, uh, given the times, do you guys have any thoughts on this? Well, apparently de-escalation is not, um, <laughs> or escalation, I should say. Yeah. Escalation is is not always uh, caused by the, the police officer. In some cases, it's, it's just the evil person that's there. Uh, and so, um, they, you know, I mean, who, whoever is such a freaking moron that they think that, uh, that a social worker is going to, um, be able to, uh, to deescalate a escalated situation into violence that's escalated into violence or close to it. Um, uh, you know, they, 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 they really should, uh, get involved in the arts and uh instead of politics because uh, they need to paint pictures of uh of flowers uh all day long and and just you know live in a fantasy world because that's where sh they're at right now you know what this whole this whole thing this whole on on, 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 on in a little broader context here this whole thing is based on a false narrative the false narrative is that oh we have these these massive amount of cases of police brutality and misconduct. There have been individual cases of police misconduct. Yes, that is true. But because of those individual cases of police misconduct, everybody, at least in media, the leftist media, is now telling us, oh, we need something else. We need to do something about, we have to have these reforms. We have to um, fix the, 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 the police service. There are individual cases of misconduct there is no conspiracy to harm or to kill anybody out there. Policemen are just doing their job. It's a dangerous job. People are going to get hurt sometimes, unfortunately. We just have to live with it and deal with it as needed. But this whole thing now have now turned into, well, we have to defund the police and we have to get these social workers to de-escalate the situation. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Are we shocked at what happened here? Nobody should be surprised. This is what's going to happen. And it will happen again. Well, well, you know, well, one of the things that I can't uh, help but notice, too, is you're just kind of reshuffling the deck, right? I mean, you're taking one government employee to handle a situation. You're replacing them with another yeah. government employee to handle the situation. Exactly. Exactly. How exactly. do you think that's going to, yeah. you know, solve a problem necessarily? I, I just, I don't know. I think Leon's yeah. going to de- oh. um, how, much, how, much, how much more people have to die? In this with, 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 with this damn nonsense, before somebody wake up and say, you know, this defunding of the police is nonsense. How much people are these yeah. or sending social workers into dangerous situations like like obviously this one was sent into? How much more people have to die? Yeah, uh, it reminds me of the monomaniacal uh, focus on COVID at the uh, detriment of all other things, including the. Good point. the the things that occur because you shut an economy down that are negative and that kill people. Yes. Literally, you're killed by sh shutdown, killed by shutdown. And uh, so it's the same thing, a mon monomaniacal focus on police misconduct and brutality at the detriment of all other things related to uh, to crime, uh, you know, sure. so... So there you have it. And here we have Knucklehead Noise Knucklehead Patrol. Patrol. Ah, that's the sound. It's time for our Knucklehead Noise Patrol, where we try to end the 
uh, show with something a little bit funny that uh, somebody in uh, uh, politics or a uh, celebrity or something has said out there recently. And this one's a little bit deeper. Um, this one isn't s simply what somebody has said, but a columnist in the New York Times uh, recently wrote, and it seems like we were just talking about one gold. Now we're, uh, excuse me, Goldberg. Now we're talking about a different Goldberg. <laughs> this time it's Michelle Goldberg, uh, New York Times uh, columnist. But uh, her, her uh, recent article she had about a week or so ago was called No One Expects Civility from Republicans. What's worse, making Sarah Sanders leave a restaurant or terrify, ter excuse me, terrorizing election officials? So, and, and in the uh, article, she goes on to talk about how, you know, uh, you know, we have, you know, how sh we should have no expectations that, uh, you know, Republicans have any standards, you know, for civility or anything like this. And, you know, I just can't help but even think about it. It's, it's almost like a, uh, you know, a tit for tat thing. You know, she's saying, uh, um, what's worse, Sarah Sanders leaving a restaurant, making her leave a restaurant or terrifying election. How about we try to be civil across the board? Let's not exactly. have our, exactly. our politicians saying, let's go out there and harass people and force them at a restaurant, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. you know, maybe let's also let the election officials do their job. You know, we certainly have the right to watch them and make sure that they're doing a correct job. But I don't think anybody, at least I'm, I'm not aware of any Republicans who are telling uh, their uh, constituents to go out there and harass them and drive them out of their jobs and out of their, you know, places where they're enjoying a meal or anything. You guys have any thoughts on that? This no, is these coming. Are yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right, this is coming from the same folks that uh, went through impeachment uh, stuff, uh, trying to get rid of um, of Trump, and and the whole time thought that he was uh, unfairly elected, and they wanted to throw out. Now they want to throw out the electoral college entirely, yeah. and just go to. I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, that is that is that uh, which is worse, um, and I'm not saying any anybody should be ha harassing anybody. Now, I don't care who they are, but, uh, yeah. you know, what's what's worth uh, trying try to get rid of uh, something that, that has kept uh, the, the whole nation uh, uh, given a fair chance in a presidential election, the Electoral College, and then or um, or just making it uh, California and New York uh, and Texas decide who's the president and everybody else just may as well just stay home and watch it on TV because you on got TV. nothing to yes. do with it. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is coming from those same people and those same people that believed a, a ridiculous uh, allegation of Russian interference in the last election, the previous election, I should say. Um, and, uh, you know, and all that. So, <laughs> OK, well, yeah, but, sorry. We would, that, that looks like we're just about out of time and uh, wow. not out of time for civility, but just out of time for talking about it. Yes. So, got it. so uh, but anyways, uh, as we wrap up the show, I wanted to let you know that uh, there's a possibility we will be shifting to Wednesday. It didn't happen this week for our live shows, but uh, we may be shifting for our live shows to then. Uh, if this is shown on uh, public access, it'll still be on at the same time as it's currently on.